The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. Today in the liturgical calendar is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the liturgical year. And it is a true joy that celebrating and worshiping uh, in leadership with us this morning are the children and youth of this church each one doing their little pieces from wherever their family is um, sequestered this morning. I do want to say a very special, special thank you to Amy Backstrom, uh, Director of Family Ministries, Rachel King, Director of Children's Music Ministries, and our wonderful recording engineer. And I certainly want to thank our children and youth and their very faithful and encouraging parents. So uh, I invite you to sit back and relax and look forward to a wonderful time of worship together. This afternoon, Sunday afternoon, the 22nd, uh, we are going to have a drive-through holiday event. It is a, a celebration of all of the holidays and also the upcoming season of Advent uh, that's in our parking lot, through our parking lot from three o'clock to four. So if you can, please load your family up and come on by and get some goodies. The, it is the habit of this church to have poinsettias that members of our congregation uh, purchase in honor or memory of someone. Because of the building being locked down and us being, needing to be extra special careful uh, this, uh, this year, we are going to order some, the church will order some poinsettias to, to decorate the chancel area. But you may um, honor someone uh, or memorialize someone by making a free will donation to the church flower fund and uh, providing the names to the church office, either uh, by phone message or through the website. And those names will be listed uh, on the bulletin for Christmas Eve, we'll probably scroll them uh, during some music piece on Christmas Eve. Uh, so I do invite you to uh, remember and to honor with flowers this season. Next Sunday, we begin a new liturgical year with the season of Advent. And all of that said, let us now prepare our hearts to worship God. Hello, I'm Pat Miles. About 12 years ago, I determined that it was time to leave my previous congregation. I looked around at various churches in Worcester. I'd never done that before. And each of the churches I attended had positive things going for them. By the time I came to First Presbyterian, I knew what I wanted in a church family. What I found initially was a friendly congregation who encouraged this youth to actively participate in the weekly service. I found not only an excellent choir, but a very talented organist. And most importantly, I found ministers who gave thought-provoking sermons that related to everyday life. It was two years until I finally felt a part of the congregation. This happened by joining the First Friends Dinner Groups, where I learn to know members more fully. Since joining First Presbyterian Church, we've had an excellent interim minister, and now we have a wonderful minister who brings thoughtful sermons to us that clearly give meaning to the scripture and to our daily lives. Our music continues to fill me with the solace that I need on a weekly basis. We have a vibrant children and youth program with Amy's thoughtful children's moments and Rachel's creative children's music program. In addition, we have dedicated Sunday school teachers for our children and youth. To me, all of this demonstrates a vibrant congregation who actively involves its members. Other aspects of First Presbyterian that I came to appreciate were the adult Sunday classes the passion of our social justice group and the teams that watch over our building, our worship services, our faith practice and the nurturing of our members. It is the responsibility of each of us 
to pledge our share to maintain our staff, our program, and our building. These things do not happen in a vacuum, but they take our pledge money to maintain the quality program and a sound and well cared for building. Please consider what you can pledge and make a commitment to First Presbyterian Church. It is important to give not only your time and talents, but also your treasure. Welcome to our Youth Sunday. Traditionally, this Sunday would have filled our chapel and our sanctuary with the youth of our church, with their vibrancy, with their youthful glow, and their creative um, things, ways in which they worship. This morning, we still have some of those components, all from the safety of their home. From near and far, our youth have participated in readings, in poems, in liturgies, in prayers, in art, and in music. We hope you enjoy this morning together of healing and wholeness and cultivating a presence of God within you. You'll find meditation practices, creative prayer writing, descriptive scripture readings, music, and other creative ways that we want to share our time with you. We hope you enjoy our morning of worship together. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 43, 16, 18, and 19. Thus says the Lord, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Please join us in the call of worship. Gather us in the lost and the lonely. Gather us in, the seeking and doubting. Gather us in, for healing, for hope, for new life we pray. Gather us in. God of this day, cultivate in us a spirit of worship. Hearts that pray, ears that hear, eyes that see, minds that believe. God of this space, cultivate in us a spirit of worship letting go of distractions and fears, isolation and doubt. God of this day, cultivate in us a spirit of worship for you are love, our new beginning, and you will always need that. Let us worship, holy God, amen. Please join me in a prayerful moment of contemplation. If the trees can do it, then so can I. At least that's what I tell myself. For if year after year, the trees can let go, with their brightest leaves and that warm autumn glow, then maybe in time, like the trees with their leaves, I can release. That which keeps me from you. In time, I can let go of my need for certainty and my need to look good, my need for busyness and my need to numb pain. The trivial ways I measure my self-worth or the hurtful ways I measure yours for if year after year the trees can let go, then maybe in time I can too. In time my heart will know spring. Please join me in prayer. God, we are works in progress. In spaces where we could cultivate belonging, we build up walls. In spaces where we could cultivate compassion, we insist on perfection and pressure ourselves to achieve the impossible. In spaces where we could get let go of anger, 
We keep score like it's our job and insist on an eye for an eye justice. So today we pray. Remind us how to cultivate hope, love, and justice. Remind us how to let go of fear, perfection, and hatred. Forgive us, guide us, heal us. Gratefully we pray, amen. You are loved by God and given so many gifts to help others. Do not fear to use these gifts, for God is with you, continually blessing you and the gifts in service. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. The Wisdom of the Fig Tree In Luke's Gospel, Jesus tells a story of a fruitless fig tree once planted with promise, only to grow barren and brittle. The landowner in the parable has returned to its empty branches for three years. With patience worn thin and hope withered, he commands the gardener to cut it down, seeing it as a liability to the soil. But where the landowner sees waste, the gardener perceives possibility that lies follow. The gardener has learned from the land that life flows in cycles, budding, flourishing, pruning, death. And so he requests one more year. Cutting the earth with the shovel, he loosens the clots that have settled like stones, so that when water comes, the earth will receive it like a soft kiss. He blankets the roots with manure so that growth can be steadied by hope, and then he lets go. What happens to the fig tree? Does it live? Does it die? Does it bear any fruit? We don't know. And so, if we can't read the end of this story, then we must write it with our own lives because we know what it feels like to be the fig tree, to be deemed worthless, to be weary enough to believe that we don't deserve to be well. And perhaps we all know what it's like to see the world through the eyes of the landowner, calculating worth based on what we produce, what we accomplish, what we provide. Can we cultivate the vision of the great gardener, the one who sees you for what you are becoming, the one who tends the prunes, nourishes and lets go? Perhaps for us, the fruit is not the ending. The fruit is in the waiting, in the dead of winter, in the manure, the nurture, the rest, the darkner, darkness. The fruit is in all of it, sowing seeds we can't yet see. We are surrounded by millions of words every day, to-do lists and advertisements, lyrics and news updates, push notifications and conversations around dinner or conference room tables. The sounds of our anxiety and busyness can so easily drown out the voice of God. So we gather today, we start with letting go of anxiety and busyness to cultivate calm. Friends, I invite you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. As you continue to breathe deeply, still your mind. Allow any thoughts or words to float by like a river. Focus only on your breath. And now, from the centering space, I invite you to hear these words from Matthew with fresh ears, a creative reading of Matthew eleven twenty eight thirty. 30. Come. Come. Come to me. Come to me. All, ye, all you who are weary and burdened. All, ye, all who are weary. All who are burdened. God, we are weary. God, we are burdened. So come. Come to me. Come to me. Come and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from this. Learn from love. Take my yoke upon you, for I am gentle and humble in heart. God, we are weary. I am gentle. God, we are burdened. I am humble in heart. Take my yoke upon you and you will find rest for your souls. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Rest your souls. Rest for your bones. Rest for your wandering mind and your broken heart. I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God, we are weary. My burden is light. God, we are broken. You will find rest. Come. Come. Come to me. I am gentle. I am here. And you will find rest. Family of God, it is rare that we slow down to dwell in God's presence. So for the next few minutes, we will cultivate holy space by allowing ourselves to let go of our to-do lists and busy lives to truly dwell in God's presence. I invite you to find one of the blank writing pages and a pen or pencil and, in, and spend a few minutes writing your prayers to God. What you write is only for you to see. 
I encourage you to hold on to these prayers and return to them at a later date. May this be a centering time. May this be a holy time. May this be an authentic and calm time between you and your Creator. Let us go to God with our written and silent prayers. Family of faith, our world is full of big problems. Big diagnoses, big illnesses, big loss, major fights, catastrophic grief. The list goes on. Fortunately for us, we worship an even bigger God. At this moment in our service, we are going to focus on letting go of our fears. Letting go of that which prevents us from laying out our burdens fully before God. And cultivating the confidence that God is present no matter what. Now, God who created you says, Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine, so do not fear. God says, You are mine. And God says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you wade through the rivers, I will be with you. And when you walk through fire, I will be with you. They will not drown you. They will not burn you. I will be with you, for you are mine. So do not fear. You are precious in my sight. Honored. Precious. I love you. I am with you. So do not remember the former things, for I am about to do a new thing. There will be a way in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. I am doing a new thing. A new thing. Do you not perceive it? I love you. I am with you. 
Do you not perceive it? I am doing a new thing. And you are mine. Have you ever seen rivers in the desert? Trust me. I have called you by name. I am with you. And you are mine. I have come to believe that it's harder to cry under an open sky. So when life falls apart, throw open the windows. Invite the sun into your shadows. Lie in the grass and let the sun mistake you for flowers. Maybe this is step one in cultivating. For flowers do not grow by mistake. They need the sun, just like we need love, and time, and the grace to try again. So put your body where the light is. You'll find God there. She is warmth. You will know it, and you will feel strong. So put your body where the light is. Maybe this is step one. Letter to someone I love. Dear loved one, I hope you let go. I hope you let go of holding yourself to impossible standards. Lower the bar. Give yourself grace. God delights in who you are. And while you're at it, I hope you let go of ignoring your beauty. The mirror is tired of your harsh words, for you are sim you are made of star stuff and music. You are the only you there is, and you are simply stunning. And I hope you'll consider letting go of your certainty, for the sun will always rise and set, and you will always be loved. What more do we really need to know than that? So let go of your fear, let go of your perfection, let go of your busyness as a son of your self-worth and the notion that creativity is a luxury. Be wild and free, plant roots like a redwood and a spine like a sunflower. For the days are short and you are beautiful. I love nothing more than to see you happy. So don't be afraid to let go. The only thing you cannot lose is God's Evergreen love. God of grace, we want to speak poetry because you deserve beauty. We want to sing songs because you deserve harmony. And we want to do good because you give love like the sun gives warmth, freely and unfiltered. Love does that to people. It turns us into artists and dreamers, believers and optimists. It softens our hearts and makes even the impossible feel possible. And, how, and oh, how we need that. So like a painter with the canvas or a sparrow with the song, we long to give you our very best. However, if we are honest, our very best does not feel worth much at times. We are carrying around hurt and heartache like a shadow, always one step behind us. We are carrying around doubt like the sky carries rain clouds, heavy and dark, blocking out the sun. We try to practice forgiveness and try to remember to pray. We try to remember those with less than us, and we try to turn to you when the world feels too dark. But the sparrow could sing you a much better song than we could, and we know that. So as we come to you today in prayer, we ask once more for your help. Cultivate in us a persistent energy for justice. Cultivate in us a resilient determination to show grace. Cultivate in us the heart to claim one another even when we come from different places, people, religions, political opinions, or beliefs. Cultivate in us the sunrise. And when we fall short, when we keep your light to ourselves, when we find ourselves caught in the monsoon of our own doubt, when we choose ourselves over belonging to others, forgive us. Find us in the rain, find us in the dark, Find us in the seas of our hurt and suffering and speak poetry to us. I am convinced that with just one taste of your love, we will be artists and dreamers, believers and optimists once again. God of grace, you deserve our very best. Thank you so much for accepting our best, worst, and everything in between. In deep gratitude, we pray. Amen.
Choose kindness. Choose love. Choose unity. Choose to wear a mask to protect our community. Go in peace. Spread joy. Love one another and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.